E3 has come and gone, and Bethesda was one of the big winners. We're going to show you why on the other side. And welcome to the Best Damn Nerd Show. James, John, and Chris here for another trailer reaction. This of the video game variety coming out of E3 and Bethesda. Uh, I love Bethesda. I'm a huge Elder Scrolls guy. I loved Skyrim. Still do have made many a character. John grinning like a Cheshire cat because we've talked about it a lot over yeah. the years. I can't believe Skyrim is as old as it is now. And well, there are so many noobs out there that still haven't organized every book in the game. I was going to say, you've read every book in the game. <laughs> I you have. Know, you know all the lore from painstakingly clicking through pages of books that you find on the ground. Is it, your it, is your playtime longer playing the game or reading books? Oh, it's got to be playing. You know, I mean, because there, there, <laughs> there are a lot of books, but... They're not that long. I mean, each each book is, you know, like even the longest ones are like, what, like 10 or 11 pages in, in, in Skyrim. And, like you an know, there's read. so much more playing time to go find the books. Yeah. So I it's easily and then, you, you know, and then so much more playing time to organize them alphabetically. But, uh, but do <laughs> I, I you own you. but do you I own the NFT like on those? <laughs> do yeah. I what? Do you own the NFT on those books? <laughs> you know what? Skyrim NFTs might be the only thing <laughs> that could get me into into NFTs. <laughs> that that be, since because it doesn't actually exist in the real world, so some type of ethereal Skyrim NFT yeah. might be able to to get me on that. I feel like the uh, priest in Count of Monte Cristo. Whenever I talk about my Skyrim library, though, it's like when <laughs> Jim Caviezel's like, I I've counted all the stones many times. But have you named them yet? It's like anybody that tells me they're a big Skyrim fan. So have you organized your library by the Dewey Decimal System yet? <laughs> anyway, that's Skyrim. We're talking Bethesda. We're talking about Starfield, the trailer that debuted at E3. And perhaps uh, from what I've heard, I have not seen it yet. But I'm told that there's a potential little uh, Easter egg for Skyrim in this as well. So let's uh, let's take a look-see. Take a gander. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Skyrim I, for top billing. Great way to open a trailer. At least a different Fallout, maybe. But yeah. Well, not not Fallout 76, I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> no, no, they, they made the right decision there. <laughs> They say, the wonder is, not that the field of stars is so vast, but that we have measured it. You're part of Constellation now, part of our family. What you found, it's the key to unlocking... I'm looking for Easter eggs so hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we reach your Constellation. This is all we've been working towards. The point of the game is actually they're they're on a dig site trying to find my library. We've come to the beginning yeah. of humanity's the final the journey. Prepare for departure. Graviton loop array full check. Your space lane is clear. That's why we're here. Engines go. To discover what's out there. Good luck, Constellation. You are go for launch. Nice. What? Is that it? That, that's, that's what we got. Boring. I saw a planet with nothing on it. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Jack shit! Yeah, wait, 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 is that the right one? <laughs> that, That's what we're hyped about? That's what people were going nuts about? Literally just because it says from the creators of Skyrim <laughs> and Fallout 4. Wait, oh, wait, you have to go off of. We're not showing you anything <laughs> particularly interesting about a sci-fi game at going, all right here. Going back to my brownie mix. I, I mean... Dis disgusting, dude. <laughs> that, that, that sandwich looks good. Sure. I mean, they. It, it, I mean, listen. I'm I'm down for some Bethesda in space, and I mean, there must have been, 
there there must have been more things that that people were excited about, right? <laughs> I don't think so. I think it's just a new Bethesda property. They're like, well, they've got they went to like Magic Dragon Age, they went to Fallout Age, and now they're going to space. So they do new properties well. And has it all been good though? Fallout seventy six was. What, but that was, it, it was that was not building successful. off something that they had already created. So I think people get excited when they do something new, which is understandable. I'm gonna be the only video game nerd in the world that says that I really didn't enjoy Fallout. I haven't really spent that much time playing Fallout, so I can't I can't speak to it one way or another. I'm not I'm not going yeah. to uh, I'm not gonna front. I, I've played it for a little bit, but nothing to really have an informed opinion on it. Uh, I got too distracted by Skyrim. The executive producer of this game, though, does specifically describe it as Starfield being Skyrim in space. So, which. It makes it, I mean, the even like the sounds of like the boots walking across the metal grates. I'm like, yeah, that's like walking in a fallout shelter. Like I recognize that sound. Like but they it, actually. It, but dude, it can't be Skyrim in space though. It, it like, the, it, you can't create the feeling of Skyrim in space. You just can't. It's you can't I, do I, it. I, I would say Fallout in space because you have these yeah, Fallout in space, sure. You have these creatures, uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a different world. Um, you have these odd creatures. Sure. So you're going to have aliens. <laughs> Dude. Dude, it's just another but, Fallout mod. Yeah. I mean, that it, it really could be <laughs> from what he, I, from what it looks like and right, there's has, nothing on the planet. So he there's has a nugget. These nerds are uh, another level. Hats off to you. The Easter egg that, that I heard about uh, tying it to, to Skyrim or Elder Scrolls 6, uh, rather, uh, is in the cockpit, there's like a little doodle of what looks like to be a map of Lilac Bay. Uh, and I cannot, no. I, I cannot import uh, just a still image <laughs> into this video. Uh, but I cannot stress enough how minuscule <laughs> and what a reach <laughs> this Easter egg is. But but hats off to you. That's uh, but that's, I, uh, quite a find. That that is very typical Beth Bethesda. Is that they just like putting like just still pictures in places like pointing to their other games. That's that's pretty typical what they do. But who cares? I mean, honestly, again, I go back to how. Like, I, I get that they're saying it's Skyrim in space, but, like, Skyrim is not in, like, what we love about Skyrim is that it's not in space. Like, oh. the, the sword and shield and the sword and sorcery element of it and, and the fantasy element of it and the, like, having this, like, one continuous open world that you travel across and do quests and, you know, collect useless items off the ground and try to figure out how to sort them in your inventory and all that stuff. Like that's that's what we love about Skyrim, or part of what we love about Skyrim. Once you get to space and you have to like travel from planet to planet, it, it's not the same feeling. I would argue against that uh, for this reason because I am currently still playing through Mass Effect Legendary Edition, yeah. and part it there are certain elements uh, to that that is sort of for you know. Skyrim in space, insert RPG in space sure. sort of elements to it. And one of the things that, you know, Mass Effect is a great sweeping story and you are sort of more bound to that main story than maybe even Skyrim because I've had, I've played through characters where I have avoided the main story and done side quest after side quest after side quest for so long right, uh, right. because that was my sort of, my, my I had the ability to do that. Uh, whereas Skyrim, uh, Mass Effect has more sweeping voice acting and all these great performances and narratives and stuff like that. It's also on a clock. Uh, it's certain ex when you do certain missions, a timer is started, or you can only do certain things if you're doing the main quest. So it is a little bit more bound. Skyrim has those elements. M all RPGs have those elements to a certain extent. Uh, but the idea of Skyrim in space, when I hear that, is a little even more open world than Mass Effect. And I love... One of the things I love most about Mass Effect 1, other than the rest of the series, is that going from planet to planet. And even before a yeah. mission gets assigned to me, I already discovered that planet and already did the damn thing because I'm a fucking explorer, dude. Yeah. 
I, I guess when I think open world, I think you can't have like ships and loading screens. You like No Man's Sky is a great example of like open world sci-fi. And and speaking of No Man's Sky, like it, to, for them to for Bethesda to enter the sci-fi realm of video games, there are some great sci-fi games you can play right now. Like Mass Effect Legendary Edition aside, which is obviously a great franchise that we it's incredible like, talked in depth about last week, and we'll continue uh, to do so. <laughs> dude, dude, Destiny One and Two, amazing games. Destiny Two is extremely fun, and especially now that it's so deep into expansion packs. I haven't uh, even got. I haven't even touched those. Should I, dude? Uh, yeah, I tried jumping back in. It was so hard. It was. It, well, yeah, it was. It was just very off. confusing about where to go, and it was. Like, it, the, the, it turned me off. Well, like but it right might away. be confusing because you had previously played it. Yeah. No. So, and that was so that was the problem. The but now jumping in like as a noob, noob, it might be easy. like, dude, Destiny is such. A, th- those games are so fun. Yeah. Just super, super fun. It's, I mean, it's it's Halo game style gameplay. Yep. Yep. Um, but Halo, just little, I will Halo's, I will grant you Halo's putting another game out. Yep. Come I will, on, I will grant you that uh, Starfield cannot be Skyrim in space because I, I doubt your character will be Dragonborn and will be doing the old Fusro Da uh, to knock somebody out of orbit. Dude, space dragons, thing. bro. And I was just gonna say that's the other thing, dude. Dragons. Like I'm I'm just saying like it it can't be Skyrim in space because thematically sci-fi feels different when you're engaging with it than sword and sorcery games like you know fantasy games do it just feels different not that it's worse it's just like i think there are a lot of ways opposite sides of the same coin though sort of but you can't just like pluck the same systems from one genre and put it in the other they're gonna have to they're gonna have to rethink and reapproach a lot of the systems and i'm sure they have but I'd be curious to see what they add to the genre. And this this trailer doesn't really give us much other than just hyping that it's that team behind a sci-fi game, which it obviously is enough for a lot of people, you know? I mean, yeah, it's, clearly. I mean, <laughs> I was... They're going to they're, they're gonna take our money. <laughs> so yeah, it look, is, it is what it is. I, I, I'll probably check it out if, uh, you know, if Bioware doesn't come out with another Mass Effect game to, to steal me away first, which I certainly, certainly hope that they do. Uh, but yeah, underwhelming trailer aside, uh, I, I, I have, I have faith that this, uh, in Bethesda, that that game will be really fun and really addictive and probably be full of glitchy side quests and things that, you know, frustrate some gamers, but, uh, cause me to just, uh, sort of paranoidly save after killing every single boar or whatever. So do you think I'll get to play this game before cyberpunk? Well, you already played cyberpunk. Well, I've tried. <laughs> what a what a failure that was. Well, this one's coming out in November, so probably yeah. Yeah, I I think I'm November going next to. Year. Yeah, November of next year. Yeah, yeah, well, that's November still pretty year. good. It's pretty fifty fifty money then. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. Yeah, that's another example of a new sci fi game. <laughs> yeah, that one was just uh, you know, great. Honestly, honestly, honestly like, and, and this is such a trivial, stupid thing for me to get caught up on. But the thing that I, that makes me so mad about all of Bethesda's games is the inventory management. It's terrible. I hate. I hate their just like truth comes li- out. Just list of things like. He, you open it up and here's just your list of shit that you've picked up. I, the, in Skyrim, they have a very it. well organized. I never it's use. Not, it's not it's, organized at it all. It is. It is. Absolutely. You got your weapons, your armor, your books, your, your miscellaneous, your food, all the stuff. It's all organized. Stems. And, and it's all shit that you just picked up because you're just a, a bot like me. I just goes around. I, you never know when you're going to need that chicken egg, everything. dude. Yeah. And then half the game I have to spend trying to get underweight so I can run around again. Every, uh, every, every, Skyrim yeah. character is a hoarder. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. It's really just it's really just hoarder management. It is. I don't I don't sell any unique item, dude. That's mine. Keeps. It's just a, <laughs> I love that. It's just a hoarder simulator. <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> thanks so much for watching this far, Nerdosphere. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, check us out on Discord, bestdamnerdshow.com slash Discord. And if you're not a hoarder, maybe you sold some of those unique <laughs> items and you got some, some money you can spare with, bestdamnerdshow.com slash Patreon. We appreciate all the support.